When did you know you wanted to play guitar? Well, when I was about five years old, my grandpa Chuck taught me how to play my guitar, just basic chords and stuff after a while, and then I kind of stopped. He came back. Uh, he taught me some more stuff as we played together, and after that I knew I wanted to play it, so we went and bought me an electric guitar instead of a little acoustic doo-doo one. And uh, after that we bought an amp, and then we kept playing and playing. I got a little bit better, so then they went and bought me an uh, Epiphone that I used to have. And then after that, we took lessons and got me a line six after that, and then went straight into a, kept doing lessons for about three years, and then went into a half stack, and then had to stop lessons, and then I joined Reaper Crew from where I am now, and then redid it. What got you really going as far as knowing you want to play guitar? As far as that, like I said, my papa Chuck, but then after watching Dimebag and Zach Wilde play, Ever since then, I saw them two play. I've always wanted to play guitar after that. I've always wanted a Dean like Dime, and then I've always wanted Zach Wilde's uh, Bullseye guitar. I loved his band. I loved Black Label, loved Ozzy, I loved Pantera, Damage Plan. I, loved I pursued it and did lessons and did as much as I could. I listened to music every day, nonstop. If I didn't have music, I'd probably go insane. But uh, I mean, I listen to all kinds of stuff. I mean, I'm not just only Pantera and all them, I'm everybody. There's Leonard Skinner, Stevie Ray, Steve Vai, everybody I listen to are all my idols pretty much. Now, if you could go on tour with somebody, who would that be? It'd probably be Mudvayne. Why? Because I've always, I, Chad for her stuff has an amazing voice and I love both guitar player, or yeah, or single guitar player, let me get that right. Love, uh, Tibbetts as the guitar player, the bass player is great, and so is the drummer. And I just, they're one of my top favorite bands and all the music they do. They're very musically talented, and I would love to tour with them. And what is it about lead that you like the most? Just being able to make all the melodies and all the cool riffs that they do and knowing how they do it and being able to do it yourself, it just makes you feel so, I guess you could say special because, they're, you know, you're not now looking up to them, you're one of them, being able to play all that stuff now. And it, it's just, it's a great feeling. What was it like being on stage the first time? Scary and nervous at the same time, but also very ready for it. Cause you, you're trying to, you trying to get stuff ready to go, trying to make sure you don't mess up, which you're always going to mess up on stage. Some point, some way you're going to mess up. There's, there's no not getting messed up at all. You know, there's a friend of mine that um, is an incredible musician. His name's Steve Zabriskie. And, um, he he told me that um, he likes to go to see these live performances and and when they mess up you know it seems stretch that note back in and and I mean that's that's emotion that's that's you know what you're playing in your heart not just you know if he wants to listen to a CD I mean he can pop that in any time you know right. he wants to to see that emotion and when I saw you play at the Curtain Club the other night I mean you just you, what was going through your mind. Just basically, you know, I've joined, I've done the band, I've done the work in it, and I, I mostly I put it in guitar, God's hand, saying, show me where I go with this, show me what I do when I'm up on stage. It's like I just get lost in playing. It's like a whole other person. And I love that feeling cause you, it's, because when the whole crowd is cheering for you and you bust out a solo and everybody's just like, oh my gosh, a kid my age doing that, they just think it's amazing. And I love the feeling of it. What was your worst experience on stage? Worst experience was probably our first show when uh, I tried, I had to use a certain effect and it wasn't loud enough and no one could hear it and it just completely threw off the entire song. It made us feel bad but at the same time, you know, it was it was our first show and we learned from our mistakes. So, I mean, it's, it's it sucks messing up, it really does, but you'll learn to get over it and you'll learn just to play right through it without thinking about it. Now, did you use that? Off stage, did you practice with that before you went on stage? Yeah, we did, but it just for some reason when we got up on stage. I guess my settings just kind of messed up on me, and then it just didn't turn out right. Like maybe I accidentally turned down my channel volume when I switched channels or something. But like I said, you'll learn from it, and then you'll learn to set all your things equal tone, equal volume, and all that. And then you'll just from there, and then after that, it's not sound mess up, it's note mess ups which you just play right through. Uh, if you make it noticeable, everybody's gonna be like, well, he messed up. Don't make it so noticeable, just play through it. 
what was your probably your highest moment of being on stage? Well, it was probably our second show when we played uh, ZZ Top, Tush and LaGrange, and the solo that I put in it was eight minutes long, I think, in all, and it was it was just everything. Half of it was all ad libbed off top of my head because we got we had so much time left. I didn't want to cut it short, so. I added what I could to it, and it just turned out so amazing. And having everybody there cheering your name, going and going crazy, and when you come off stage, and everybody's just like, "Dude, that was amazing!" And they just, they, it seems like they just love you so much, and it just, it's just overwhelming sometimes. Did you feel when you got off stage? I felt excited and happy, but I was also worried about did it sound good? Did anybody, you know, be able to tell if we messed up or if we didn't or you know, and if they, if everybody liked it, because that's our biggest thing, we want everybody to like our music. Because we spent a lot of hard time and work into making our music and stuff. And we just wanted everybody to love it, and most people did. They just, I didn't even go up to them, they just come up to me and be like, dude, it was amazing. Y'all are so awesome, and you're solo in Latouche, or that's what we call it. But it was so amazing, and oh, we just love it. And they were all wanting us to go to the studio and make CDs, but, you know, we're just not starting off. We're wanting to write more music before we go into the studio. Yeah, I notice you guys have, you know, your own stuff. You're not just up there playing, you know, what, you know, the top 100s or anything like that. I mean, you're playing your stuff. Who who's writing that? Where are you coming up with this? Well, it's what we do is a lot of bands, I don't know if they do it like this, but some bands don't. They'll one person will go home, write a whole song and then bring it to the band and go, "This is what I want you and you and you to do." We don't do that. What I'll do is I'll come up with some kind of riff, just something off my head and build with that, you know, kind of get used to it, get familiar with it, and then I'll take it to the band in our band practices, and I'll be like, this is what I got, you know, and then I'll just keep playing it, and then the drummer will come in, then my bass player will come in with something, and then the rhythm guitar player will come in. And that's from there, it's just how we make our songs, you know, it might go on for 20 minutes straight, but after we're done with it and we like the stuff, we'll pick out certain things that we like that we did in that, and just put it into the song, make the chorus and everything, the bridges, and the solos, I'll sit down for several hours with just that riff and stuff that we do through the course and put my solo into it, do like that. You're 17, so you know you're you haven't been doing this as long as some of these guys are in their 30s and stuff like that. But you just seem like you've got so much heart and soul and 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 experience. I mean, <laughs> and, and so you know that's amazing. If it, but if you were going to do something different, if you could go back in time and change something, what would you change? I would change back when I first started lessons. I would still do lessons, but for a while I didn't play much. I played probably once a month, and whatever he'd show me, I would do it in there, and then I'd bring it back to him just the same as it was when I first tried to play it. And then it wasn't that great, but if I could go back, I would go back and practice every day as much as I could all day long, because there ain't no telling where I'd be if I did that right now at this point. What What's the future hold for you? What, what are your goals? What do you... What are the plans? The main goal is just to be able to go on, get get the band signed, go on tour, write amazing music, have everybody love us. And it's not just for the money, it's for the love of the music that I have with this. And same thing with the bass player and the drummer and the rhythm guitarist. If we're in it for the music, not the money, which some people do. They're like, oh, what are you going to do after you get signed and get all this money? You know, are you going to buy a mansion? No, I'm going to, for a lot of it, I'm going to donate to charities. That's just the kind of person I am. I, I'll give back more than I give to myself. And it's just, it's like I said, love for the music, and we all just, nothing feels better than doing the music that we love and showing it to everybody out in the world. I'm sure you'll pick up a extra guitar here and there. Well, yeah, <laughs> I will. But, I mean, it's not just all me, 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 me. Now, you know, everybody hits a brick wall where they just feel like their creativity is not going anywhere and you know things like that if if, if you guys hit that and, and if you have how do you get yourself out of that yeah we actually about probably about a third practice together we did because we were when we first started we were writing music together it was the first that was actually the first band practice we wrote the breaking tides which was our first song ever but after about the third practice you know none of us had nothing we couldn't think of anything to play everything else sounded like some other band's music and we were just like, we can't, you know, we felt bad because we couldn't figure it out and we were wanting to write some new stuff. So we were like, you know what, let's just all take a break, take a week off, come back two weeks later and see how we do. And it worked that way. We just take a break when we have, when we have our writing block. We just take a break off, you know, 
don't play guitar every day for the next week or something. Play like maybe once or three times a day a week, and then that last week coming back, play all week, and you'll have some so much more stuff you could write because it gives your mind time to take a break and really think about music and what you can really put with stuff. Do you, do you ever take some time and listen to other genres? I mean, like, you know, country, blues, you know, stuff like that. I mean, what do you ever do anything like that? Yes, I, I really, uh, I like country. I really do. I love blues. It's just my favorite kind of stuff. To, is it's just it's so much soul into it, and they they, I mean, they, they, you know that it's something they feel when they play the blues because it's just it's amazing what they can do. I mean, it's just it's. I, I really don't know how to explain it. I just the blues is just amazing to me, and country. It's I love country because a lot of that stuff they do you could take and write into a song, just put it into crunch, and then it's metal. But at the same time, you know, you just gotta love the blue or the country because it's just soft, simple, and it's it sounds so good from compared to some other stuff that just or extremely fast three notes in a song and that's it. You know that that right there gets really boring. But when you get to country, you know, you're getting chords, bar chords, everything in there, good vocals into it, and same in the blues, you're getting that's just soul playing the guitar. If you could give some advice to somebody that was going to follow in your path and, and get started in music, you know, what would that be? First thing is be sure you really want to do music. That's the number one thing. Don't try to do it just because you want it or just because someone else has it and you want it to. You got to actually want it. You, want, you need the hunger for it. You need to practice all you can as much as you can. Get started as soon as possible. Otherwise, you just you won't go nowhere with it. You'll just be like kind of how like I was for about two years, not doing anything with it, and just sitting there. But if you really love it and you got the hunger and the drive for it, you will practice every day, and that's just all you need to do is to practice and have the hunger for the uh, music. <laughs> Facebook, check out Reaper Crew. We're uh, Facebook and YouTube. YouTube channels Reaper Crew DFW. All right, All right. sounds good. We got it.